just want to bring in, I had a little feeling, feeling fancy before I started off, so I thought I'd animate a bit. Um, so you'll see some things flying out at you periodically. Um, I'm very pleased to talk to, to you today about this novel approach to uh, treating functional neuroendocrine degradation that occurs during aging. Um, actually, while it's novel in a clinical application, the science has been around for many decades. I'm pleased to be a part of uh, the development of this concept uh, currently because I feel that while we all recognize hormone replacement therapy as being a major part, if not the cornerstone, of our interventions, our clinical interventions in aging, uh, we have to recall that the use of hormones is actually application of end products of the neuroendocrine axes. And so while these things are effective in actually uh, having positive effects on the soma and functional aspects of organs and tissues, with regard to end the endocrine system itself, we're actually cutting back, we're removing everything above the hormone. So uh, the, the downside of that is that we're create, creating a disuse atrophy in the endocrine system that's really degrading over time and what we really want to accomplish is maintenance of the entire axis to facilitate not only physiological restoration, but also to gain the benefits of the hormones application on the soma. So we've sort of generated with this name, primary locus intervention, because it is intended to target the primary locus at loci at which age impacts negatively on the neuroendocrine system. So PLY, or PLY therapy, is an acronym for primary locus intervention. And this therapy is called primary locus intervention because it, it opposes the progressive age-related decline in hormone production at the highest neuroendocrine levels, uh, not only simply by replacing hormones uh, directly. So <clears throat> the advantage of doing this is that we're not only getting the hormones, but we're maintaining the feedback relationships and the physiological structure, infrastructure, that underlies neuroendocrine uh, integrity. And, and by doing this, um, not having the time here to go into the details, you're really actually favoring uh, reducing the risk for intrinsic diseases that are associated with loss of hormones, both at the, at, at the end as well as at the beginning of the physiological relationships that exist in youth. So what is PLY therapy? It's simply a pharmacological method for enhancing production of brain catecholamines uh, for the intention of reducing risk for intrinsic disease and promoting health and function of the pituitary gland. So we can ask then, why focus on catecholamines? And the answer is, catecholamines actually decline with aging, and they're important because they, un they subserve uh, the primary temporal signals that come down from the, from the brain and impinge upon the neurosecretory neurons of the hypothalamic nuclei that interact with the pituitary gland. Uh, these deficits that occur in the brain are primary to any that we see downstream. Uh, for example, steady state concentrations and turnover of dopamine and norepinephrine in the medial basal hypothalamus, in the arcuate nucleus, in the, all, in the nuclei that actually uh, release the, the neurosecretory neurons into the um, uh, capillary plexus that feeds the pituitary decline significantly with age. I regret I don't have a pointer that I can reach adequately to, uh, to uh, uh, talk about these slides, but you'll see the dark, the dark um, uh, bars and the hatch bars are simply representations of levels of dopamine and norepinephrine that are compared and contrasted in young and old animals. Um, uh, on the left is dopamine, and you see that you have high concentrations of this, these, uh, these catecholamines um, in, in youth. Uh, same thing as with norepinephrine. The hatch bars are simply animals treated with alpha-methylparatyrosine, which prevents the synthesis of new, and you s then maintain, you can see what the turnover of these compounds are, and they degrade um, uh, differentially and you can see that the levels 
either, both the turnover levels and the absolute levels of both these catecholamines are significantly reduced in the old animals compared to young. The synthesis is reduced due to inadequate availability of precursor. That's really not the primary reason. The primary reason has to do with temporal disorder, which subsequently leads to a reduction in synthesis of adequate amounts of catecholamines. However, we can approach this problem by providing uh, precursor molecules to generate uh, or increase the production of these molecules. In any event, the synthesis uh, uh, has been documented as being uh, compromised by mites many years ago. And um, another reason that there's a loss of, of these neurotransmitters with aging is that catecholamine, uh, I mean, catabolism is, is significantly increased by enhanced activity of monamine oxidase B. Now, this enzyme uh, increases with age, and it increases in many parts of the brain, but I've highlighted for you its effect on the hypothalamus, and here you can see that the activity of the enzyme uh, is increased significantly in age when it's compared either as a nanomoles per milligram of tissue or as protein. So in, e in any event, you have significant increase in activity. So you've got a combination problem. You've got a synthesis paucity, and you've got an increased metabolic uh, capacity of enhanced monamine oxidase B. 